Hey guys, welcome back to Speed Addiction RC. Uh, more on the Limitless. I have tried the drift tire trick that somebody gave me, trying to go in between here and here to see if I couldn't stabilize the turnbuckles and improve the steering. Uh, that did not work. So, if you can, I don't know if you can see that play in the servo saver it's not as bad as it was because I have been messing around with bushings and everything but there is still some play and what happens is if you turn to the right the car does the steering does not want to come back to center because there's literally you can move the with the controller the servo that much and the wheels won't move so, too much play. Uh, that isn't going to stop us from doing some quarter throttle to maybe half throttle tuning passes to try to dial in the throttle curve um, and reduce the tire spin at the beginning of a pass. Uh, but as far as take, trying to max it out on this pinion, not yet. Um, here's the plan. I found the bearing size. I know what size bearing to get. Um, and got those ordered. Uh, I'm going to get the scorched servo saver grip and turnbuckle set. Um, eliminate the servo saver completely. Because I honestly think the play that's left is in the actual servo saver itself, not in anything else. Um, I've been through everything that is the only spot left. I've had the turnbuckles out, I've had the steering apart, you know, looking for any play. There is literally no play, you know, just a little bit at the wheel right there. Um, I'm not, and I'm not exactly sure, I think that's in the hex. Uh, but there is literally, and I don't think it's enough to matter. Um, but there is literally no play anywhere else except right there. In that side. So, that tells me it's either the bushings. My, that my bushings are crap, which they're bushings. Or the servo savers crap. Um, we do what we gotta do. So, Scorched RC is going to get another order uh, for me, and it's going to be for the servo savior eliminator turnbuckle set, and then I will get have the bearings come in to replace the bushings in that, um, and then it will be a ball bearing steering set versus bushings and hopefully that takes care of the problem um, if not there is another trick I will try when I'm home and that is using heat shrink tube on the uh, risers Let's see if that doesn't take care of it um, on the post. I think, oh, excuse me, I think combination of the two will be pretty close. Um, I can't think of anything else to do other than that. I mean, it's going to get to a point where it's either going to be all gone or I'm going to get to a point where I'm just going to have to deal with it. Uh, I'm not ready to accept defeat yet on eliminating that play. Um, tuning wise and suspension wise, my sub leaking shock I thought was leaking. That wasn't a leak. It was just oil left over on the outside from filling it that it pulled. Luckily. Um, so I didn't have to take the shock apart. Um, I wiped it off, cycled it. Uh, it's been on the car now for 
a good three, four hours. Uh, it's full of oil, so it's not the shock leaking. It was just excess on the outside. Um, preload, I dialed in some preload on all the shocks. I'm, again, I'm guessing on this car, so that's where we're starting at. I'm running 80 weight in the front, 30 weight in the rear. Again, that's where I'm starting at. No, I do not lock my diffs. I have never locked a diff. I will not lock a diff. Um, it's better, in my opinion, to tune your diffs. Now, that is my opinion. That opinion is shared by others uh, who agree with me uh, that it is better to tune the diffs. I know spool. the spool is a quick and easy way to do it. problem is that pavement is not smooth okay if you're running the car and one tire goes across a dip and is not in full contact with the ground this differential is designed to unlock and I basically idle that wheel so the wheels that have traction continue to pull the car and attempt to keep it straight or turn whatever the case may be um, a spool you know rear tire loses grip for whatever reason all right if it's spooled it's going to keep spinning and then you're going to end up in a skid uh, same thing with the front uh, you'll end up with a front end skid and good luck uh, so I run my discs unlocked um, I will continue to run them unlocked I do not know that 8030 is going to be the final viscosities that's where the tuning passes come in I have to figure out I have to watch the car video the car figure out where the discs are locking up and then make that determination um, probably end up going to a stiffer front oil. I'm pretty sure, pretty close to what others are running in the rear that I have spoke with in person. Um, one guy is even running as low as 10k in the rear. Um, but everyone seems to have told me that the softer oils, the, the, the limitless diffs respond better. So, uh, we followed their example almost. You know, he was running like 50k in the front. Well, I'm running 80. So we're going to try that. Um, I'm sure adjustments will be needed. Same thing with the shocks and the shock oil. They're 50 weight right now. I'm sure those will change. Uh, especially the rear. I'll probably end up having to go to a 55 to a 60 weight. Um, possibly even higher front again may go up may go down again it depends on how well it tracks um, sway bars I have not messed with they are still as they came out of the box um, on the car at some point I'm sure I will have to mess with them just haven't done so yet uh, basically we're going to start with front and toe um, we're going to do probably a quarter to a half throttle pass if we can get it keep it straight at half throttle um, basically first time I just kind of ran the car around the front of the car was trying to do this part of that's due to the servo saver I think the other part, I think, is the front toe. Um, to me, just visually looking at it, it looks like it's towed in, just towed in, just a little bit. Um, that can cause front end wander. Um, so, if that's the case, then we will begin adjusting the steering links to. 
kind of bring the tires out, the front of the tires out up here, tow it out. Uh, the rear toe is at 0.5. I don't want to mess with that. Um, if the rear is wanting to float, I will make camber changes. Okay? I will not make a toe change to the rear. The only way I'll change the toe to rear is go from a 0.5 to a 0. Um, wait again. The front, yeah. The front's where it's at. As far as the wander, it's either the, the save, I, and again, I think it's the combination of the servo saver and the toe. The sway bars will probably be the very last thing I touch, if I touch them at all. Um, and the main, main thing is, is the sway bars is to keep the car flat. I don't, you know, as it's going over bumps and everything, I don't want it rocking. And the sway bars will somewhat take care of that or help with it. Um, shock position. I'm toying with the idea of going to the outside holes before I run it. Um, at some point. Maybe before I go full power pass. Right now I've got them kind of in the neutral position basically as they were out of the box on the stock mounts. On the stock towers. Um, I know Ryan from Ram Jam has sent a little care package over that has new posts. So when I switch those over, when I get back home, they may go to the outside holes. Just to give it a little bit more leverage um, on the suspension. And it will also probably drop the car just a little bit lower it down because it does sit up pretty high right now so that may be the other option um, front splitter I'm sure some of y'all have noticed when I put the body on I don't know if anybody has or not but that the front lip of the body is up off of the front splitter just a little bit and that's because there is need, I need to make another piece I didn't get it done before I came out this time to go across the front of the body. I want to reinforce the body right there with carbon fiber. Then and that will sit down on this. Um, and that will leave this section of the front splitter sticking out to almost act like a canard to hopefully help the stable, you know, keep the front end down. Um, a lot of people's issues is that, you know, just the limit looks like any other speed run car. The front end wants to kind of start to lift. And a lot of people are drooping the front end. Um, I haven't done that yet. Again, part of the tuning process. You kind of inch up on things. You don't... Don't just slap a bunch of stuff together and slap a bunch of tuning on it and say that's going to work. Um, especially on a chassis that is fairly new. This is the DRG Custom RC chassis. There's not a whole lot of them out there. There's only four of these that I know of right now at GT width. Uh, possibly five. One. I know, I know there was another one to be made. Um, so. This chassis is going to act a little bit different because it's weighted a little bit different. Um, it's not an alloy front piece. That's stainless steel, which means the front end is going to be heavier than the scorched chassis. Um, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, we're going to find out. Um, I think it's going to be a good thing um, to help keep the front end down. So... I may not have to droop the front end as much. Uh, I may have to droop it more. I don't know. We're going to inch up on it one change at a time. Um, motor and everything. 
Uh, again, those lower throttle passes will help kind of run the motor in a little bit. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll do a few passes, pull the caps, put some oil in the bearings, put the caps back on, do a few passes, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just to try to keep that motor healthy because uh, these are still kind of hard to get. <laughs> um, everybody's grabbing them up for new new limitless and East VTE2 builds. So I was lucky to get one. The other thing, I need to get more packs. Um, I got three speed run cars now. I basically need a set of packs for each one at least. Um, I'll get there. So, you know, I'll, most most expensive part right here. These, these two packs cost almost as much as the stock uh, roller did. Um, so it's you gain a little bit each time. Each time you hop online and do an order, you just got to make a list and keep knocking it out until it's all done. Whew. Anyway, guys, that's the uh, limitless update for the, uh, this week. Um, I'm gaining, just not on the road yet, but I'm gaining on the chassis. Um, you know, you put one together, you find things that you didn't think you were going to have to address, and then you find out, oh crap, I guess I should have ordered those two, and that's where I'm at. The old crap, I guess I should have ordered the scorched uh, turnbuckles. Corner buckles. Uh, last thing I want to talk about tires. These are BSR purples. Okay. The issue I'm I think a lot of guys are having is I think you know no matter what foam tire you run, they all kind of pretty much come on rims like this at this scale. Uh, and I think what's happening is that plastic is flexing a lot and after a few passes you start getting fatigue in the plastic and it cracks and once it once it cracks that crack you know it could be a hairline crack at first you do another pass and all of a sudden it widens out you don't catch it and then your next pass a chunk of your tire comes flying off and with a chunk of the rim with it um, I think we're kind of at that point where we're going to have to start looking at different materials for rims and I'm not sure I'm thinking like a carbon reinforced nylon instead of this you know, do a 3D printed carbon reinforced nylon rim or something and then have foam put on it um, that way it's not quite as flexible you know some flex in it is good which the nylon would you know would have some flex some give for pebbles and stuff like that but it wouldn't be as flexible as this and I honestly think that's where part of the problem is you know these were built for track use drag racing um you know where you're running you're not you're, you're doing 80 90 miles an hour for a very short distance now we're asking these tires to do 200 miles an hour for 1900 feet and they're just not the rims aren't designed for that the tires can handle it the rims are not designed for it and i think that's where our problem is I have an idea, but I'm not ready to share that idea just yet. I got to do some more research. On the real speed cars at Bonneville, um, nowadays the jet powered cars are running ti all titanium wheels, where it's just solid titanium. There's no rubber on them. Uh, some of the slower classes, they're running a aluminum disc wheel that looks like this 
but has rubber on it but they're also way thinner way thinner and uh and i'm wondering you know we keep this width do a titanium rim because if you look at the back of the BSRs that stiffening rib that's back there does not come out more than a third of the rim and I honestly think it really ought to come out a little bit more me personally it'd be better if it reached all the way across the rim I think that would help a ton too but we might need to have somebody do rims specific for speed runs anyway guys I'm beat I'm bushed I'm yawning uh, I'm gonna get off here y'all have a good night